and welcome to episode 13 of Champion Connections. I'm your host, Chris Coleman. So today's guest actually took a class in college on photography and ended up starting a business out of a passion she didn't even know she had. So this episode will feature a little bit about her journey, how she found her passion, how she manages her time while being in school and running her own business. Enjoy. It's, it's a really good one. Really good. So, hello. <laughs> um, my name is Jasmine Austin. I am a photographer. I am a youth speaker. And I also um, sit on the board of a nonprofit called Center for Building Strong Families. So, first off, the bat sounds like you're doing some amazing <laughs> things. Oh, I'm also a blogger. <laughs> there it is. Look at that. <laughs> You're doing a lot of things. Your hands are in a lot of places. So I guess we can first start with photography. Did you grow up wishing or looking to be a photographer? Um, actually, not really. Uh, well, I didn't know it yet. Um, I was always, you know, that child taking a bunch of pictures of like everything and anything. Um, but I didn't necessarily grow up thinking, I want to be a photographer. I just know I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Um, that's pretty much all I ever wanted to be. Um, but I took a class in college that kind of taught me how to use a camera professionally. And then from there, I was like, I'm actually not bad at this. This is like actually a pretty good hustle, you know. So it kind of evolved from there. Got it. Your, your pictures are stunning, by the way. Thank you. Thank so you. So guys, if you're looking, and ladies, for a photographer, <laughs> check her out. Thank you. But you mentioned you also are a youth speaker. So how did you get involved with that? Okay, so that kind of came from, um, I used to have a blog like maybe like a year or two ago called ElevatorNoise.com. And um, on that blog, I would kind of just blog about things that inspired me, things that motivated me, and just everything that I was thinking about. And um, from there, um, people actually really enjoyed the site. And from there, I had people reach out to me about speaking in schools. And um, that's kind of how that started. And once I spoke in my first school, I just, you know, had that feeling like, Okay, I like this. This is right. And um, from there, I just kept it going. Ah, that's always the best. You find your passion. You don't even know it exists. Right. It was. That's how life is, though. Honestly, life is just so crazy. It, very is. true. In a good way, though. I mean. Yeah, yeah. But, all right, so you're a photographer, blogger. You're on the board of a nonprofit. And you speak at schools. How do you find time to balance all of those things as well as have some type of life? Right. Um, well, I've recently gotten better at this. I, I have a very um, organized schedule now. I like to, I, I usually like to, to have like 12 hour work days and I'll spend, you know, four hours doing one thing, four hours doing one thing and then four hours doing another thing. And it kind of, that works for me. So really just being organized <laughs> has, has helped me, uh, you know, uh, divide my time properly to each to each uh, thing. I, I don't know, last time we talked, uh, you, you went old school and pulled out an actual notebook. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. can you touch on that? Because that, that's kind of, haven't seen sure. somebody pulled out a planner I wish I had it like, right with me. I could read something from it. But, yeah, so my notebook, I mean, I kind of, sometimes, I, I use it like as a journal as well as like a, a goal setter for the beginning of each month. Uh, beginning of each month, I'll write down, you know, my goals for that month and, um, you know, like the things I need to do to accomplish those goals yeah. and then I'll put them into the computer and um, or I organize them in a program called Asana and um, yeah just organize my life. How, how did you, uh, I mean everybody has obviously their own concept or their own uh, habit but how did you come up with that one? Um, I guess in general like just goal setting or how you wanted to set your goals, that whole strategy. Um, how do I do that? I don't know. Everything for me, honestly, always just evolves over time. Um, I've tried everything. I've tried just, you know, putting everything in the computer. I've tried just putting everything just on a book. Um, but for me, I don't know. I just tried it and it worked. And I was like, I like this. I like it a lot. So, yeah, that's it. Fair enough. So back to your, your business. Yeah. When you first went about creating it, um, obviously you didn't just wake up and say, oh my God, I know how to run a business. Is there anything that you, uh, used or 
any people that you reached out to to help spur you along? Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, I would say um, when I first started, I, I, I kind of used the internet as, as my first resource. Um, the internet has so many useful resources, like it's for free. <laughs> And it's just, it's pretty much insane. Like I I was on YouTube heavily. I was on you know photography sites heavily. And then from there, I kind of you know started reaching out to different mentors in the city, um, as well as um, my my mom. She's been an entrepreneur for as long as I can remember. And um, what else did I do? Oh, I read books. I read a lot. <laughs> I make time every day um, to either listen to an audiobook or to read something. So that, that helps me with my business or with just my, just mentally, I make time every day to make sure I read or, or listen to an audiobook every single day. So since you said that, you know I'm going to ask. You got you to gotta drop some knowledge. Uh, <laughs> drop a book, drop a speaker um, you listen to. Okay, so one um, I just finished is called No Excuses by Brian Tracy, ah, and it's, it's yeah you, you've read it. I haven't read the book, but I, I like his quotes. Yeah, it's it's like it's the, the thing about him. He's like he's so so simple, but his stuff is just so real, and that's what I like about him. He he keeps everything super super simple, and he was just basically saying in the book that you know self discipline is really one of the most important things that we need to to have in order to be successful because without self-discipline there are no other you know qualities that you can really um, tap into yeah full force you know makes sense so that's my that's my that might be one of my favorites so far and that's helped me change my mentality about a lot of things so yeah so all right speaking on mindset obviously when you're going after some type of dream or goal um not everyone around you always gets what you're trying to do and so typically it's like you've changed. Have mm -hmm. you felt that you've experienced that and have begun to surround yourself with new people? Or if not, how have you been able to, I guess, balance the no new friends, shout out to Drake, <laughs> uh, guidelines and keep in like your inner circle and like still doing what you do? Um, I would say that I've actually, I've honestly, I've been fortunate enough to have a circle of friends and family who support me like wholeheartedly so I haven't really experienced you know just the I haven't experienced that too much um, so I have been very blessed to have my mom's an entrepreneur her whole life and then my friends they're just really 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 understanding and and they're just great support systems so I mean I have you know encountered more new friends I've encountered I mean I because you know I like to I like to reach out I like to reach out to, to different people that For are sure. doing you know great things and so I have new friends however I always make sure to keep my same friends close because they are the ones who have my back and who been riding with me you know what I mean got it so, so yeah so Drake is a liar no new friends yeah. I love new friends I just was telling this somebody this other day I love new friends and I don't care who knows it I love new friends wow okay she's <laughs> she's coming out guys she loves new friends so if you're looking for yeah. a new friend you'll get all right. her details later but you obviously are an entrepreneur. You right. take photos, you do nonprofit, you work with kids. Now, what wakes you up in the morning? What do you get passionate about when you wake up and you're like, oh my God, like I have a 12 hour a day ahead of me? Because in theory, that just sounds crazy, right? Like you're about to work for 12 hours and you wake up and you're excited about it. How, what makes you passionate about life? It makes me passionate. I think it's. It's like it's just that that burning desire, you know. It's it's just something I I can't quite put my finger on it, but it's something that's there. It's something that it's that desire wakes you up, and it, it's just that feeling like okay, I'm doing the right thing. I'm walking within my purpose, and just that feeling that's what keeps me going, and that's what keeps me passionate, you know. The feeling that you're making a difference. You're leaving yeah. a legacy as people. Yeah, say. making a difference and also, you know, just, yeah, making a difference and walking in my purpose. And that's, it's that feeling. I just, that feeling, I know it. I feel that. <laughs> it keeps me going. Yeah. That's, that's pretty dope. I mean, some people don't ever find that in life. Yeah, I didn't find it for a long time, so I'm very blessed to have found it recently. Hey, more power to you. Yeah. All right, so this is... You know, everyone always likes to talk about the success, but we have to delve into the failures or setbacks. Mm -hmm. What do you think was like 
one of the biggest failures that you've learned the most from and or a setback that you had that aha moment like okay this is where I, where I really know that I'm passionate about this and I'm going to get past this no matter what okay think about that so I would say I guess the biggest the biggest setback that I ever really encountered was um, I guess when I didn't believe in my craft wholeheartedly and I didn't believe that I had what it took to do it full time. Um, for a while I was I was working as well as, you know, doing my entrepreneurial thing and it wasn't until I took that step like, okay, I'm pretty damn good at this. I wholeheartedly believe in my craft and um, there is no more plan B. Like this is this is what I'm gonna do and and that's just it. So that was a defining moment for me just leaving my job and and really going wholeheartedly and full force into my business. So just believing in myself, that was a turning point. Have you have you found that um things have taken off even further since you delved? Yes, yes. yes. I mean things aren't like moving super fast, but they're moving the way they should be. I've had so much more time to, to get my like my mental um, health right as well. Not, not saying, I'm, not, I'm not crazy, but like you know, <laughs> I've had time to, you know, I've had time to, to read more and time to really invest in myself more. And I think that's so important. Like I have time to go for a walk every morning. I have time to, to do the things that I need to do to get, to change myself in order to change my business and change the things around me. So I'm working on my, I have way more time to work on myself. And I think that's so vital and so, so important. You know? Got it. Got it. All right. So what about the biggest failure that you can look back on and say you've learned a lesson from? In terms of business? Yeah. Business, life, whatever, whatever you can do a, a parable if you like. <sighs> biggest failure. Um, that's actually really hard. I don't really know. Uh, all right, it doesn't have to be the biggest, just a failure that you can say like, all right, I learned from that. And if you encountered it again, like how did you do something differently. Can we come back to that one? I really, uh, uh, I really don't know. I'm sure I have. I mean, I've done a lot of dumb things, so. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the biggest one. Um, can we come back? Got it, got it. All right. So, guys, remember, we're coming back to that one. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's going. There are a lot of businesses out in the world. How did you find your first customer? Uh, my first customer with photography, I found it through family. Like what I did was I, um, I didn't have, I had no portfolio. So what I did was I went and took pictures of my little cousin and posted them on Facebook and on Twitter and whatever other social network that I could. And I was just like, um, I'm now offering photo shoots. And then from there, people were like, wow, these are really great. And they contacted me. So that was really all I did first and then from there it just grew. So pretty much you, you put yourself out there yeah. and people became very receptive of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really done too much, you know, advertising or things like that. Like I'll just post a picture and people are like, oh wow, I want to shoot. So that's kind of how my business has evolved and just word of mouth and things like that. And you started this while you were in school, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started in, um, I believe, uh, at the end of 2011, I believe. So can you talk about how, um, you know, you did this while in college? Because a lot of people think, oh, well, I have to wait till I'm out of school. I have to wait till I'm like 25 or 30 and I have like six degrees and I can speak 12 <laughs> different languages yeah. in order to do something that they're mm -hmm. passionate about. Right. Well, one of the most valuable things that we have is time, I believe. And... Um, it's all about using your time wisely. If you really want something and you really want to go after whatever it is you want to go after, you'll figure out a way to make it happen. You'll think of creative ways to adjust your schedule. You'll think of, you'll just be creative and you'll, you'll think of ways to make everything you want to happen, happen. And everything will begin to just align the way you want them to, if you believe it first. So that's what I believe at least. So now that you're believing, I think you have an answer about that that failure. <laughs> um. <laughs> See, yeah, you're thinking too deep. The first thing that comes to mind, like just uh, one example, maybe 
you overbooked the photo shoot and you couldn't give your time to both. Just something, something simple like that. Mm -mm. <laughs> oh man, the pressure, the pressure. I don't know, I don't know but it's, because it's so crazy because I feel like I've, I've had so many experiences and things like that that have helped me grow. Um, I would say maybe one of my biggest failure failures is possibly getting sidetracked by things that don't need my attention. Fair enough. Fair enough. That's yeah. That's a valid answer. Yeah. You, you think you could elaborate a little bit? Uh, I don't want to go too deep too deep into it, but um, you know, a lot of times, I guess some people will come into your life and. Um, Sometimes they they take away your attention from other things that you okay. should be should be working on. So that's probably one of the biggest, I guess, failures um, that I've experienced that I've learned from. Got it. And ladies and gentlemen, this is not just when it comes to relationships. This is anything. Right. You can be putting right. your time into TV, video games. Right. It's not better in your life, quote unquote. I mean, everyone needs entertainment, but. How are you spending your time? I guess that's the overlining lesson. Yeah. Got it. All right. Just survival. So, five years, where are we going to see Miss Jasmine? Five years. Well, in five years, I would like to, I would like for my business to be successful. I want to be into, um, I want to be working in hopefully commercial uh, advertising or things like that in terms of my photography. And um, with my, uh, I guess, nonprofit thing that I'm doing in, in the youth speaking and things like that, I would like to have traveled um, around the country and, and, you know, speak to, to kids uh, all over. Also, I'd like to be well traveled. I've already traveled to but I, I don't know how this happened, but I've already traveled to um, about 15 or 16 different countries, and I would like to just keep traveling as much as I possibly can and just to keep seeing the things that God put on this earth and just keep experiencing that because there's something about it. It's just, it's like inspiration like no other. Yeah. Seeing things you've never seen before, it's, it's amazing. So um, next time you go, I'm just keep a suitcase open for me. I got you. We out. All right. I, we, I'll pay that $50 fee for the overweight suitcase. I'm not, I'm not flying spirit, you know. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I mean, I'm down with that. All right. So, in closing, if you have one piece of advice for people that are looking to go after their dreams, their passions, doesn't matter what field, mm -hmm. what would it be? My biggest piece of advice would have to be um, to do what you can with what you have. Uh, I feel like I feel like a lot of people um, are afraid to chase their dreams and afraid to chase what they really want because they make up so many excuses. One major one is, you know, I don't have the money. Like I said earlier, if you really, really want something to happen, you'll get very, very creative. And that's one thing that all successful entrepreneurs are, and that's creative. Um, so just get creative and think of things you can do right here right now that can be, that can just at least give you a start the for the hardest part is just starting and so once you start there's really no stopping you if you really want it so just start and do what you can with what you have now and that's that's what i can give that's right. what i did so fair enough yeah. i mean also ladies and gentlemen there are tons of sneakers video games clothes that you have in your closet that you do not wear sell them Exactly. Sell them. So many ways to make money is ridiculous. <laughs> and some some businesses you don't even need money. Honestly, you yeah. can like I don't want to say with photography, but you can always rent a camera from someone. Mm -hmm. You can always put your own pictures online. You can build a website for free. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you really want to go after anything, Jasmine is attesting. She's a testimony that you can do it. <laughs> She wasn't a photographer by natural grace. She's no Mark Zuckerberg. But she's making things happen, and you can do it too. So I truly thank you for coming on the show today, Jasmine. You're a true champion, Aww. and you're awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem. Wow. Wasn't that some good information? I thank Jasmine for coming on the show. It's always nice to meet 
and talk with other entrepreneurs and other people that are doing some awesome stuff. Doesn't matter what field. Ladies and gentlemen, just like her, you can find your passion. You may not know what it is at the moment, but here's two ways you can do it. One, either think about what it is you hate the most and what you want to change the most and you may have found your passion. Or two, just try new things. You never know what it could be. Just like Jasmine, she took a class and realized, hey, I like doing this. And now she has her own business doing exactly that. Ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to tune in this Thursday for the next episode, which features a great person that I just recently met. But she's really awesome. And like Jasmine, she's creative. She's an artist. She's a chef. And she hails from the big city, the Big Apple, New York. So you don't want to miss this one. But like I always say, we're all champions. We just have to make those connections. So until then, keep being beautiful, keep living life, and find your passion. See ya.